Well, good afternoon. My name is Michael. <clears throat> I'm delighted to talk to you today about Screen. I'm one of the students uh, working on it for a bit over a year now. My hope is to give you kind of a high-level overview, a roadmap to the different pieces of Screen. So you, as you're playing with it yourselves, you can kind of figure out where, where to look again for some feature you wanted or some information that you wanted. If you're playing with Screen now, um, which you can go to at screen.encodeproject.org. If you find something really interesting, feel free to ignore me. Uh, and then we can, you can point out, point out something interesting later. Hopefully the, uh, the demo gremlins will leave me alone uh, for now. So we have these millions of candidate regulatory elements. And unless you're using uh, you know, the command line in Linux to sort through them, it's very difficult to actually manipulate them. So we, we needed this visualizer that we've called uh, Screen, Search Candidate Regulatory Elements by ENCODE. And this is where we're trying to integrate all the candidate, candidate regulatory elements, all of the information we have about these from, ENCO, from other ENCODE data sets, as well as some other external resources to combine them all into one place, kind of a one-stop shopping, where you can go to, to, to search for your favorite gene or your favorite region or your favorite SNP and see if there's any potentially functional CRE there. Um, this is the home screen. And um, before we dive into the, into the real meat of screen, I just wanted to point out a couple of extra tabs here that you might be interested in. Uh, the first one might be, uh, there's an AASHG tab. Um, right here you can go and download today's workshop slides. You can get a handout we're going to have that Jill's going to go over with in a few minutes. Uh, there's a survey at the end that you can fill out once you're done. And then if you're really interested and excited by, uh, as we are, by the Income Encyclopedia, there's also a, a mailing list we just started. In addition, on the main screen, there's a few other tabs. Uh, one is an About page where you can have all the details that Jill has talked about about how the CREs were actually built. One of the other developers has uh, devised a series of tutorials that will be similar in nature to what I'm talking about with you today. But if you want to go home and take a look at these, uh, feel free. And the last part is, well, where are these CREs? Um, this page, the Files tab, actually has a download link to all of the CREs, both the cell type agnostic that Jill talked about, as well as the over 700 different cell types we have across human and mouse, broken down, uh, as Jill mentioned, by five groups in nine states. All right. So let's take a look. Let's, um, uh, the search page bifurcates into two directions, a human search and a mouse search. Uh, today we're going to look at the uh, hemoglobin gamma subunit B, subunit 2, and uh, we can just click on here and, and load the main page. Okay. There's a lot of things going on here, but let's, uh, let's focus on the most important thing. The most important thing here is this main table, which is actually the result of the search for CREs. So we, we put in the coordinate, chromosome 11, of this particular uh, start and end of base pairs, and here are all the CREs uh, in that region that meet certain thresholds we specify. First off, all of these candidate regulatory elements have a DNA Z score of greater than 1.64. So basically, what you can think about this is we've taken all the DNA sites and we've, we've sliced off the top 5%. So these are the strongest, uh, these are the series of the strongest DNA Z scores. The main table here is then a breakdown of uh, the CRE itself. We have a million of these elements. How do we number them? Well, we've come up with a scheme. Um, ENCODE, uh, HD19, um, uh, um, CREs, and with a certain number of digits after them. If a CRE is within plus or minus 2 kb of a TSS, st uh, of a transcription start site, we're going to label it as proximal, a P. If it's farther away, we're going to label it as a D. Uh, for some special CREs that have uh, both DNAs and HDK4ME3 or HDK27AC, so the Z score is greater than 1.64 in the same cell type, we're going to label those as concordant and give them a little star. In addition, for these cell type agnostic CREs, we're indicating the max Z score for three different um, epigenetic uh, markers. So we're going to look at if it has a, a Z score in H3K4ME3 greater than 1.64 across any of the cell types, and likewise for H3K27AC and CTCI. For each CRE, we're going to show you across all the cell types the maximum Z score, both for DNAs, for 4ME3, for 27AC, and CTCI. We give you the chromosome it's on, its start site, and the length of the CRE. We also then show you the um, six nearest genes, the three nearest protein coding genes, and the three nearest um, uh, genes in general to this particular CRE. Since there's still quite a number of series here, we, we still have 93 here in the selection, we actually have a little mechanism where you can select your series of particular interest from these 93. And this is a, a basically a little cart. And uh, you can click on the cart, you can click on the cart icon itself, 
and you'll come up with a separate page that's just your CVs that you're truly interested in. And last but not least, uh, we can display, you can visualize these on the UCSC genome browser. Now, so these are the cell type agnostic series. On the left, we'll give you more tools to further filter and restrict the search for these series. The most important one is perhaps the cell type. A lot of times you have, you have just a particular cell type of interest, so you can do a little search here, and uh, we can, for instance, find our cell of interest K562. We select K562, the search, um, the search is, um, is repeated, and now we have a few less series. I think from 90, we're down to 53. So these are the strongest series in this particular cell type. We have other facets here. We can change the chromosome if you like. You can uh, change the region manually if you really want to. And you can also adjust the z-score thresholds. For instance, if you were interested in CREs that have promoter-like signatures, you could bump up the, the lower threshold for H3K4 and E3 to something maybe, you know, 1.64, 1.4. And the search will repeat with a smaller number of CREs returned. Oh, um, yeah, sorry, the region changed. Now, for each CRE, you can then click for more details. So if you go to the row and click on that, we're going to give you a details page. This is where we start to tie in all of the external resources that we have, as well as start to interrelate CREs amongst themselves. The first page here, the first tab here, is top tissues. This shows you across all the cell types available, what is the z-score for that particular, what is the z-score of the signal for that particular CRE. And these you can search across. Uh, sort these and, and, what, and whatnot. This is going to be uh, present for all four of the assays, DNA, CTCF, 4 me 3 and 27AC. The next tab is uh, the near, nearby genomic features. So nearby genes, other CREs nearby within a certain window, other SNPs that are nearby, and these are also searchable and browsable. We're also showing you other genes in the tab that the CRE is in, as well as other CREs within that tab with a certain uh, threshold, certain cutoff for distance. Next tab, um, this is where we intersect all of the ENCODE project TF and histone data sets. So for the thousands of chip experiments that are available, we're going to run through those, do a, bed tool, do a fancy bed tools intersect, and give you this list. So in particular here, there is CT, chip seek TF, um, TF of max, that has 10 experiments that actually uh, intersect with this CRE. If you click on the 10, you then get all the experiments that are intersecting here, and you can click on the link and actually go and grab that file. In addition, we link out to uh, one of the tools that we've been building for a while, uh, Factorbook. Factorbook is another visualizer that's a ChIPSeq TF motif-centric visualizer. Here we're going to give you a little overview of the particular TF. We're going to take all the ChIPSeq TF peaks for these different experiments and look at build aggregation plots of the histone marks around them within a plus or minus 2 kb window. We're going to run a motif finder, a mean, mean chip, and uh, look at the, to on the top 500 TF peaks for this particular experiment, see what kind of motifs there are. We have some techniques for tossing out uh, erroneous motifs, and we can talk about more of that at my poster. We've also built heat maps around all of these chip chipsy TF peaks. Here, the columns are a chipsy TF peak, and the, um, the signal here is the actual, in this particular instance, um, the histone mark signal in a 10 kb window, and for TF, other TFs in a uh, plus or minus 2 kb window. And last but not least, uh, we also have some nucleosome positioning data uh, for this particular TF. Um, as you can imagine, the CREs and the motifs might be are very important. They're very deeply interrelated and very important. So one of the things I'm working on now is integrating Factorbook deeper into the screen. But as a separate tool, it, at least it stands alone right now and lets you uh, investigate some things. All right, back to screen. Next tab. We've also um, <clears throat> intersected the CREs uh, with the FENTA5 cage transcriptome data. And uh, you might be kind of interested in this if you're interested in link RNAs. We've also taken all of the RNA-seq data from ENCODE project and, um, and are displaying it here for the gene nearest the CRE in this case. Uh, there's a few different ways of viewing this data. We're going to give you the, the cell type it's in. We're going to give you uh, different ways of actually looking at this. You can look at this uh, for RNA-seq data at the TPM or FPKM. You can look at this grouped by tissue. You can look at this grouped uh, by maximum tissue. 
the particular score, whatever particular units you like. Similarly, for TSS activity, we have some Rampage data, and we also are displaying this here now. Uh, if you have multiple TSSs, you have multiple transcripts available, you can scroll through these uh, and also change the sort order and how you display these two. Uh, Jill was talking about um, relating mouse and human uh, CREs. Here we do lift over from human to mouse and mouse to human, and we have the um, the lifted over, if the lifted over intersects another uh, real CRE and the other species, they may actually display that link here. You can click on that and investigate those. All right, two more tabs for CRE depot. Because we have so many cell types, it's, and it's very difficult to have kind of an overall, overall view of how active these are in different cell types, we came up with this idea called mini peaks. And these are basically little mini snapshots of a window of a, plus or minus two KB from either end of the CRE. And we actually are showing you a downsampled version of the signal track uh, for each of these cell types uh, in both DNA H3K27AC and H3K4ME3. And these can be sorted and searched likewise. Um, and one of the other pro projects that Jill's been working on are enhancer target gene finding, and we're starting to give you an, an indication here of links based on GFX data or EQTLs. And you can also uh, look at the gene involved and also the data is actually based upon. Okay, so that's the CRE details for you. Um, a lot of people, when they come to this, will, the most important thing in many ways is to look at this in the genome browser. And we've tried to build a bunch of tools to help you configure the genome browser, give you the best experience when looking at the series um, in, in UCSC. So for here, for instance, you can actually search across the 700 or 400 or so cell types available and um, add in whatever you'd like here. This configures a dynamically made UCSC Genome Browser Track Hub that you can then open up and actually view and, and add in your own tracks and do whatever you like with that. Okay, good. This does take a little while though so one of the newest things we've been working on, and this is still this still really in beta, is an integrated um, genome browser here. And uh, this is still a little bit little bit raw, but we are actually starting to become quite happy with how it's looking. Um, this is available if you just click on the little circular box next to each CRE, and this is purely dynamic, all JavaScript. Um, we're using some of the IGV.js code, and the rest is ours. And uh, hopefully we'll we'll continue to work on this and expand this and. This might make, uh, make you stay in screen a, a good bit longer than, than otherwise. So that's something you, that we can play with and let us know how that, how, what you think of that. Um, we have a few other tools uh, available. We just have a, um, you can now upload your own text file in the normal BED3 format, and we'll give you back a shopping cart of all the CRE, of the top 1,000 CREs that intersect in your regions of interest. Um, so that's most of, of that for the CRE search application. We have a few other things, though, in screen. One of them is, an, is a separate gene expression app, um, similar, similarly to what you've seen before in the CRE details page. However, you also can start to filter down on the biosample types, as well as in whatever particular select departments you like. All right, halfway done. A few things left. There's another app. Let's, take, let's say we uh, go over to the mouse world. We have an app that shows you differential gene expression for mice. As you saw, we have some very nice mouse data sets. So we developed this tool. Um, basically, this is taking um, the mouse RNA-seq data and running DE-seq2 and outputting the results. Here you have different, two different comparison cell lines, one versus the other. And you can deselect these and look around and find uh, whatever in particular you'd like to explore. On the main screen here, we have uh, full change of uh, expression. We then also have, in dots, all of the enhancer-like signature and promoter-like signature CREs in this region. They're also available in this table. You can sort and search. Uh, you can also look for the genes involved. So each of these boxes here is overlapped its particular gene, and um, with the red and green meaning that Watson are critical strains. And one last thing is a GWAS visualizer. So if you're interested in SNPs, the natural question to ask would be, well, 
uh, let's see your use overlap my SNPs of interest. And Jill's been working on this for, for quite some time, where we have a, a wide range of studies. You can go to the PubMed link for more information. And you can go to the particular GBOS study you're interested in, look at the particular cell type you're interested in, and then look at the CREs involved in um, overlapping the SNPs in that study. We can link out to, um, to Ensemble for the SNPs. We can link out to, to Gene Cars for the Gene, and of course, the good old UCSC browser. We do show you the total number of LD blocks and the percent of LD blocks that actually overlap those CREs. 